Are we live? Good afternoon. It is afternoon, right? Yeah, because it's noon. Technically, yeah. 1201. Yep. Good afternoon and welcome to Table Talk. My name is Michael Scott and... I'm Allison Marriott. Nice to see all you today. See all you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Listen, we're excited. You know why? Why? Two things. Did you One, say we are excited? Yeah, we were talking about Tell this. Tell me why I'm excited. Well, fall. Oh, yes. Fall, like the first oh, official okay. day of fall is this Sunday, right? Is it? And I so, did not know that. You know me in vests. I love vests. And so I come in and Alice says, aren't you hot? I'm like, I'm actually good today. I love, I have a lot of vests. I like vests, both dress vests and casual vests. Mm -hmm. uh, she told me I look like Marty McFly today. <laughs> well, it led me right to Back to the Future <laughs> where she asks if he's in the Coast Guard. Because <laughs> of the vest. It's a puffy vest. This is, they're fun. I like these. Uh, that's the first thing. It's fall, yeah. right? Fall starting Sunday, autumn, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, number two, we ordered a plexiglass partition to go between us so we can take our mask off next week. High five! Um, Yay! Because I know we sound muffled and you can't, so I'm like, we can figure this out. Other people are doing this, so we're going to get a partition so we can take our mask off so you can see Allison's pretty beard. I mean face! <laughs> and so... Um, <laughs> now you're going to actually have to shave. I did. Oh, I, did. I can't take it off. Can I? Okay. It's, I, I trim. Yeah. I don't know. It's because you don't see my family. I don't need to trim my well, beard. Like ladies now, if they wanted to, could just do makeup, eyes only. It saves you so much time. Right? Just well, it's like you in the fall and winter, right? You don't shave the legs. It just, it's just, it's just, it's, it's. Here down, you just, no one's going to see it. It's like, no one's going to see it. You're golden. We're good to go. In the winter. All right. I'm going to share this real quick. I know we, I give, I give a couple minutes to let everybody on. So, um, I'm sharing this. Please, all you, if you're watching right now, please share. All right. Un, hashtag uncomfortable. There this we go. This is the best topic. And the service was, was uncomfortable. Was it? Like you did a good. good job. He did that on purpose. Like the things that make us. Ugh. So if you're watching today and you don't watch us on Sundays, uh, I preached about this. So we try to talk, you know, this is. Table Talk's meant to be kind of an extension and a different conversation than Sunday mornings. Uh, but we made this video and it had all these awkward things on it, like the word moist. <laughs> like that chocolate cake was very moist. And they said it over and over. It was so funny. And so uh, Danielle, I'm not sure if she's watching right now, but Danielle sent me a text and she says, so she's, she was serving in our, our Sunday school on Sunday morning, so she wasn't in service. And she said, I watched it later on my phone. I had my earbuds in. And she said, and she goes, I hear moist. And she goes, then I heard the chalkboard. <laughs> and she said she threw her earbuds across the room. She couldn't do it. <laughs> I also sat in the audience for 30 seconds. 30 seconds of silence is a long, long time. Like and right so, before he was supposed to go up and yeah. talk. And we're all waiting, just waiting. and Everybody's staring at me. There's this little girl in front, in front of me. She's like, sir? <laughs> she's like, hey. You know, it's your aren't turn. You, aren't you? <laughs> You're supposed to be up there. Get up there. Do your job. Uh, what makes you uncomfortable? That's, I think it's just the most honest question we can we can talk about because the premise of why uncomfortable is important is that now I don't mean this in a creepy, awkward way, um, but I do mean it in the fact that we we gravitate towards comfort, mm -hmm. and so. Um, and scientifically, when we find ourselves in comfort and routine, and there's a place for comfort and retreat, routine, so don't, don't hear me say we're always supposed to be uncomfortable, but I think human nature is we, we seek, we move towards being comfortable, and when our brains go into that place of comfort and routine of doing the same thing, and then it just becomes a pattern, and then uh, the learning part of our brain, uh, the problem-solving part of our brain, the growing part of our brain shuts down. Goes into neutral. Yeah, and so, and so I believe that then um, if we talk about our faith and our humanity, that one of the greatest things we can do is expand our mind. Uh, you might hear the term expand your consciousness, expand your awareness. And these are the things that I believe expand our heart. And so I think people should be uncomfortable. Uh, and let, me, let me back up. That we should strive towards the uncomfortable in growing. So not all the time. Ooh. You know what they say, you're supposed to like try to brush your teeth with the opposite hand and you're supposed to drive different ways home like to and from work than you normally would and it's all about that like making new pathways and connections in your brain and keep, if you've ever tried to brush your teeth with the so left, left hand. I'm a lefty. See, it's, but I have an electric toothbrush though, right? Because the doctor yells at me if I don't use it. Though. Is it? Like, because you turn your hand a certain way and it's so automatic you don't even think about it. All of a sudden you're brushing it. your nose. <laughs> 
<laughs> I guess. So. But you are you're creating new neural Not my nose itches. Oh, when, you okay. do, when you do that, and it's like the whole the whole concept in your life too of just creating new habits, new thought processes, new. Flinches. Here's something I should have thought of this Sunday. What? How many of you go to a restaurant and order the same thing every time you go to a restaurant? Oh, sometimes. It depends on the restaurant, but yeah. If so, you have a favorite somewhere, it's like, oh, but that's why I come here. <laughs> you know? But, I mean, there's something to that. Yeah. But honestly, this seems like it's a small thing, but it's something I can all do. The next time you go to a restaurant, order something new. See, it just that something as simple as ordering something new, the unknown, right? Mm -hmm can change the way you operate. Like you, you said to driving home a different way. What was your other example? Um, what was my Going answer? to a different store, changing pattern and routine. It's mm -hmm. in those spaces that literally we can change our thoughts and our patterns and the way we learn and behave. And so when you see yourself differently automatically because you're doing something different. Yes. So you feel differently. Too. Yeah. And you start to think about things differently. Does anyone have an example of any of that? Like things that make you cringy, uncomfortable, or having to have changed a pattern, a way of doing something, and then what was the result, good or bad? Let us let us hear it. So I, um, you got something? Else? Yeah. Well, Chuck said that asking for help is one of those things that makes us all uncomfortable. Ooh. It does. Carla said having to tell people things that they don't want to hear. She's a pharmacist, so she has to tell people the price of their prescription. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. That's, that's the rough one. Yeah. Are, are these two don't go together? This is going to be a bad combo for you. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ashley said when others are speaking unkindly about someone else and she finds herself getting sucked in because uh, she doesn't know how to tell the other person that what they're doing isn't kind, and so she, that, that just makes her extremely uncomfortable. So what do what do we do to push us into that just you know that uncomfortableness? So a lot of those things we're describing are situations we find ourselves in. But how personally? So if we if we understand that being uncomfortable helps us to grow, we can we can still grow in other ways. But if that helps us to get in that space in our head and our mind to grow, what are the things that we're doing, or what are the steps that we're taking to be uncomfortable? Hmm. Right. And so um, well, they are describing like the uncomfortable interpersonal conflicts that come up on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's true though. Most of the things that make us uncomfortable have to do with how is someone going to react to me if I blah, whatever it is. So then it shapes our behavior, right? Yeah. So, so we think they're going to react a certain way. We don't want the uncomfortable. We try to avoid the yeah. uncomfortable and then it shapes us and it doesn't always shape us in a good way. Now there's a time and a place to filter and whatever else, but if, if somebody else's reaction is shaping your behavior, we may want to look at, you know, both sides of that. Um, so, how, so, but what are the intentional things we do? So, I read a lot. Actually, I read, but I listen to books more than anything. I have Audible on my phone. Me too. I love audiobooks. Oh, they're the best. And, oh my gosh. Did you know, I, con that you can, like, check them out for free? There's seriously? That. Yeah. Well, I pay a lot of money <clears throat> to Audible every year because I'm so You might not be able to get the exact book you want right. when you want it, but they do. They rent them. I mean, rent them. Load them really? for free. Really? Yeah. So I, I, uh, It's called Libby. This app. And, and you can, like, log in and use your phone to listen? Yeah. Oh, I do that? it all the time. Well there, you, well, there you go. Learn something new and folks, day. that's relatable. That's relatable. No, no, that's table talk. And table talk. Because <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't like free audio books? Thanks for joining us today. That's your takeaway. No, um, how do we, uh, I don't even remember what I was saying before that. Well, you're saying one of the intentional things that we do oh, yeah. in order to break out of the cycles and patterns that we're in. I think reading, listening to... Um, the podcasts. Podcasts are such a big thing right now. Uh, I hope stuff like this challenges you. I, I think we we have a tendency to hang out with people who are like us, listen to things that support our own ideas. Hear the same conversations mm -hmm. over yeah. and over. Yeah. Um, I will often, um, I always tell people I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican. Uh, I think parties are ridiculous and stupid, and and but there are people that I listen to, and I always want if I want to hear something like what's going on social because I don't watch the news and I'm, I'm a little out of touch sometimes with some things. There are two different people. One is super uh, left, and one is super right, and I will go to listen to both of their arguments because I think they're intelligent people, and I'll try to you know somewhere in the middle probably is the truth, and and so 
um, I think we get stuck in our own world and we only listen to the things that already support our ideas instead of letting things challenge us and make us uncomfortable. Oh, we go so far as to say, I can't hang out with you because... Or, or I can't, you say, or unfriend me, right? Yeah, well, you I'm say it makes you. me uncomfortable so I can right. no longer be your friend. Anyone yeah. had that happen? I've done it. I'd love to hear that story. <laughs> oh, goodness, That's I've gossipy, but... Well, and, and honestly, our systems are built this way. You know, the way Facebook and Instagram and uh, Twitter, these all these things are based on algorithms that um, find what you like and then send you more of what you like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so it's all, it's all written. It's, it's all it's about brilliant. you. Well, it, but what, what that does, though, is polarize us more. We blame, I blame the media, too. But, you know, the, these social media platforms, the, what they're feeding us, mm -hmm. right, um, and we're kind of like robots, and then we find it gets us more riled up and riled up, and we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of saying, hey, maybe I should take a breath, maybe I should pause for a moment, and maybe I should listen and intentionally go look at an issue from the other side. Now, some of you, <laughs> I've had people text me that you've thrown your phones or computers across the room in some of my sermons because you don't. Ooh. It's challenged you a little bit, and that's good because that's exactly what I'm going for. If you if you walk away from this or from a sermon that I give, and you don't feel something inside going, ooh, that felt a little off, let's go explore that. Um, I think that we haven't done our job the best, right? I think the point is to challenge, to get people to think differently. Um, I mean, we're Christians. Jesus challenged us to love even our enemy, right? So we all know there's an other, there's an enemy, but Jesus encourages us to love them, right? Just like we do our neighbor or our friend or our family. And we can't love somebody. We actually we can't actually do that without knowing who they are and, and getting to know relationship the person. Yeah. Even if you don't necessarily agree, why do we feel so threatened? And that's what it comes down to: is you feel threatened, mm -hmm. like somehow my position is going to be wrong or weakened, or I'm going to look dumb if I have to defend it to this person right. or whatever. And so to me, it's like, but why do we have to defend it? Why can't we just listen? And understand, seek to understand, and not be fighting about things. Well, it's, it's the tribal mindset, right? We want to be a part of a tribe. We want to feel like we're a part of something. And so there is there is something primal in our brains that happens mm -hmm. when we find ourselves in that space. We want to be, you know, um, our, our roots are in tribalism, meaning, you know, we, we want to congregate and come together, and we all want to be on the same team. And um, so there's part of that. There's something in our brain that's kicking off, you know, something when that happens. And that, ooh, we're a part of something. I'm a part of something bigger than myself, which I believe is our spirituality, right? I believe that's what we call God. That's the thing that connects us. And so I believe there's a way to tap into it. But I think it's an artificial tapping into it when we hold our hat and make it about one issue, mm -hmm. right? When we say, I'm only going to follow this, you know. And then, and then when the next issue comes up, you don't always agree with all those people, right? And then that group divides, 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 divides until we have just the individual, mm -hmm. which is what we find around a lot of, right? We have individuals, and everybody has their own individual stances instead well, of... Well, that's why the, we have a church on every street corner. Like, the, how many churches <laughs> why we have are a within church. <laughs> a mile of this church? It's like, really? Church if row. The, if the church, like, could let go of some of that nonsense yeah. and actually band together like that we would have a lot more pull to do things in the community and to take care of issues as a collective but well i don't tell people i'm a, I'm a pastor right i just i when i'm out in public i wouldn't either I go around it. <laughs> and there's a reason for that because the second i do you know if i'm out at a bar having a beer like if we're out and i'm saying i'm a pastor the first thing they do they're just like oh Okay. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not that kind of pastor, right? <laughs> and um, there's this preconceived notion that churches are all about what do we, you know, what do we think and what do you think is right and wrong? And people ask me all the time, well, what do you think about this or that? And I'm like, I don't... Like you have a magic opinion? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. I, well, I am closer to God than anybody right, else. Right, Allison. right, and so You've got a direct um, connection. Yeah, yeah, we have a phone. It's like a red phone in my office, like, the, you know. Like the president has or something, I don't know. It's a, it's a, I can I attest know. to this, people. Michael is a normal, everyday <laughs> guy. But, but people want to know, what do you believe? And I'm like, why does it matter what I believe? I mean, this is, we don't come, we're not a community, and I don't care what community it is. Church, I don't care if it's a, a, a sports community. It doesn't matter what we believe as much as it matters. What are we doing? 
And are we being better human beings? And I don't need to define that for you, right? That's between, that's between you and, and, and your personal relationship, what I would say a personal relationship with God. What do you feel? What were we talking about before this? What is your truth, right? What is, are you living out what you believe? You mean before we started table talk? That's what I meant, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. We were having a discussion about... I don't remember what it was, but... Well, it was just about, do you actually have a, a set of beliefs that drives everything you do? Or is it like, oh, this is important to me, unless this, and you come up with conditions for why or why not, you're going to actually live out what right. you believe. But anyway, I don't know if that's, a, if that's on topic. Probably not. Uh, but we always have... And I'll, I'm going to dig into just a, I'm gonna, a little bit of a preview for this coming week. We always want, so we want to be right, right? We want our tribe, we want everybody to be on board. There's biochemical things that happen when you, you know, you're right and you feel right, and then it's fleeting and it goes away like that. But we want to we want to do that, we want to be that, we want to participate in that. Um, but there's, um, there's this thing that happens when we do that, right? Then it becomes us against them, mm -hmm. against us, them. And then there's an emergence of what we would call other, right? Other is just somebody who's not in your camp. So that's the other. And Jesus, um, we're going to talk about this this week, but Jesus, all his time he spent was with other. So in, their, purpose, yeah, right. in their day and age, other was defined in a lot of different ways. And we'll talk about a few of them this week. But, but he spent all of his time with other and invites us to that same space mm -hmm. that, we, that our time, energy, and effort is spent on other, right? However, it's defined for you because Jesus. I mean, we all are going to have an enemy, right? We're all we're all going to have people we disagree with. Mm -hmm. Or there's those not even an enemy, but just those we fail to include into our yeah. bubble, um, and that's who Jesus went after, and that's why he made the establishment uncomfortable. One of the reasons why. Well, yeah, because we can't include other. Right. Our club, our group is exclusive. We can only have right. Our club is for Karen and Gary. That's just a bunch and of we're not going to spoil it with right. just anybody. Yeah, we can't. We can't let. We can't <laughs> let the homeless, gay, African American, you know, all the things you know, all the things that we, we we treat as other, right? What we should be doing is it should be welcoming in everyone and spending our time focusing on helping other. However, that's defined. It's defined differently for everybody, but spending our time there instead of being exclusive because we tend to think in exclusive terms, right? I mean. And especially, you know, and I, I live in a community that it's not gated, but there's metaphoric gates. <laughs> there's, there's, um, you know, there's, there's, keep the bad, keep the other out, and we're going to keep our whatever it is. I redefine whether it's rich or white, you know, whatever. All the things that we usually tend to have um, that do financially well in America, we tend to want to collect those and, and be a part of those things. Yeah, and I think we tend to want to shut out those we don't understand, and we don't understand them because we don't spend time. There's no relationship. No, yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. coming, Amy? Anybody have anything to say out there? Well, there's some good comments. Beth is talking about respecting each other's opinions, mm -hmm. showing respect, showing kindness, even if you don't agree. And and Ashley was saying that too. That it's it's the respect in the in the relationship and. She likes to be challenged, but she doesn't like to be challenged when the other person is coming at her from a disrespectful stance. Right. Oh, because right. we get a, I get my feathers ruffled when I feel like someone is treating me as if I'm dumb or as if I'm unaware or what. Like I get my feathers ruffled about that. Like that's just pride for me. Like. Right. But. Well, for some of us, our value it depends on what your value system is. If your value system is respect, right? If that's important to you, for somebody to disrespect you, right? I'm then you just, I'm going to show you. <laughs> well, well, but then what wells up? Now yeah. I have to prove to you, right? And yeah. so this, it gets into a, an important conversation about how we address, how, how do we talk about difficult things? Um, how do we talk about politics? How do we talk about sex? That's always a big one, right? We don't talk about sex. Uh, we don't. We don't talk about... Because um, we're afraid we're going to offend or right. be offended. Right. We're so um, easily offended, aren't we? I, I mean, I gotta say, I'm so easily offended sometimes and I have to like smack myself, like, especially in like your spouse relationship. I feel like, because it's so easy just to like let your hair down, so to speak, and let everything fly out of your mouth. And so I feel like for me, I have to like do a, a reality check of quit being so easily offended. Give people the benefit of the doubt 
that maybe they're not intending to offend you, you know? Well, I have this rosy lens of life where I honestly think most people, almost everybody I've ever encountered in life, um, is coming at a thing from, from a love and good standpoint, right? So meaning, but their idea of what I it means. I wish I thought that. I really, <laughs> really? So I think I you have a, a little okay. bit of a uh, cynical. Uh, okay. Yeah, we've talked about we that have. before. We have, yeah. I have a little bit of a cynical nature and I tend to like, it's like I don't want to be duped. You're not going to pull one over on me. You know that feeling? Okay. I don't know where that comes from, but that's just the cynicism I think of. Do I always think people have the best intentions? Uh, so I think they, so, ooh, I want ooh to. we disagree. I want You're to. wrong, Alice. Like, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I want to think that of people. I just, that's not my natural lens. That's not my go-to, and I have to work on that. So I think, so my, my lens is a little different. I think they are coming from, uh, at least in their head. Right? They think it, they are. They think they are. Now, the per, what they produce, what happens is different. But I don't, I think still in our culture, there is good and bad, right? And we don't intentionally, I think most people, there are some, I think most people do a thing. Now, we might disagree, but they do a thing, and I believe it's coming from a good place. This is why when I look at somebody, we adamantly disagree. I'm trying to say, okay, what's coming out may be visceral and aggressive and whatever else. Mm -hmm. But I honestly believe, and I know there's, you disagree and other people might, but I honestly believe deep down somewhere what's driving that is they're protecting somebody or themselves or it's not it's not a bad place I it's believe it's almost like from a, a good fearful place. place though it is it is like I'm, yeah. i feel threatened yeah. by what you're saying and i'm the worst because y'all i don't know if you know anybody like this but like the hives like that come up my neck like she gets you red. cannot hide it she I gets red. it goes red all the way splotchy right here so you know if i'm feeling passionate and it's not that i'm mad always but if I care, if I'm passionate about something, or you know, you get the chin quiver like you're gonna cry, and I hate those. Like it gives me away every time. I like turtleneck. I need Allison turtleneck. and I have had a few run-ins. Have you seen that? Like we're good, we're good friends, but we've had a few think times where we've disagreed, right? And she like, but we both get a little aggressive. I don't want to out you. I get aggressive. <laughs> she may or may not. <laughs> but we've had some fun. We have. We've had yeah, a couple different yeah. times. Yeah. And, you know, she apologized later and said she was wrong, so it's fine. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. I actually, at least once, maybe twice, I've had to be like, I'm sorry, I was a jerk. Um, uh, because, you know, we, we've done that. I Did mean, I that's... Did I get splotchy, though? Oh, Did yeah. you notice it? Oh, 100%. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I think her face gets red. Right? Like, it's just like, it's like, warning, warning, warning. You cannot even pretend to keep your cool. <laughs> like, there, I cannot be a fake, like front person I mean I do put on a front don't, don't get me wrong but I cannot fake it when I'm upset I can't act like I'm not because you see it so it I'm similar on display <laughs> so you get two of those people in the same room right <laughs> so but that's good to talk about though because I I'm thinking of one specific instance we're in the office and I um, I was really aggressive right and uh, I go what I call red or aggressive when I'm when I'm in tension and conflict, like your volume goes up yeah. and your intensity. So I, I become an eight. And uh, then I get uh, uncomfortable and I'm like, for a moment and then she then does I that, and then, she, then it goes back again. I don't want to have you. So, <laughs> I, but we've had disagreements, right? I mean, <laughs> we we've had these things, and so so how we deal with a thing though becomes important. So so if you've ever done any work, if you've ever been to counseling or anything. There's things you can do to teach yourself to learn that when you get to the escalated thing, I read something today, if your heart rate is over like 140, something like this, that um, you're in a fight or flight and you're incapable of well, rational thought. we talked thoughts. about that, how we should have an app to clue us in that we can't email. My watch will do it, right? Yeah. Get to 140, it should just no go off. You are no longer allowed to email, email right now. No, no, no email, texting, no, no conversation, emailing. you need to calm down, right? Yeah. That was our million dollar idea. <laughs> that was like on the second table talk <laughs> that came up with this idea. Well, so, but um, it's important for us to, if we don't recognize, we call those triggers, right? If we don't recognize those triggers, we can't offset them. Then, then, then what are we? Um, I, you know, we joke about people being sheeple, right? We're just led around by, oh, I think we do, we have this tendency, um, ego, self, that we just give into our emotions and our feelings. Mm -hmm. And emotions and feelings in and of themselves aren't bad, but we should not let them drive everything we do. They can't take over our, the way we, our tone of voice with somebody, right. or the disrespectful words that are about to come out of my mouth because I'm so upset. Like, I'm so upset gives me license to say, say whatever, whatever. Yeah. and somehow you're excused. And I struggle with this. I, um, Amy knows, uh, Allison knows, my wife knows, my kids know, right? That. Um, I, I, I get I flare up right? I'm just like oh, I'm gonna 
uh, I come from, I used to be poor, you know, so I, I, I've learned at a young age that I had to flare up and exert, you know, try to power my way through a thing out of self-preservation. Right. Right. In order to survive when I was a child, I had to do these things for my own self. And so if you've ever learned anything about yourself, like these are the things that you have to work through. And so um, when we're talking, so if you're talking with somebody, if you have a, when I say visceral, is that a, is that a yeah, good word like to use? Yeah, like a gut reaction. Like if, if there's something, if you're in a conversation with somebody and you guys are disagreeing and there's something welling up within you. You can tell um, when someone is in that mode. It's a good time. It's okay to say, let's pause. But you also need to ask yourself, why am I having this reaction? Mm -hmm. What's going on? Why am I so uncomfortable? Now, an uncomfortable feeling isn't, that's not a bad thing in and of itself, right? It can lead us to grow. It's also the early warning sign of our primal brains to say there's danger, right? Somebody's, and when I say danger, somebody's about to challenge your preconceived notions of who you are and your values and your beliefs. And so that makes us feel threatened. Heart rate escalates. We get into the space where we just, we then we lash out, right? Right. We're not thinking rationally in that moment. So if anything through this, the act of us intentionally going to uncomfortable places it, it, it is actually an act of I'm going to listen. I'm not going to react to this. Um, and of course, you can't control how you, let me back up. When you have a, a reaction to something, right, that is something that's going on. It's an emotion. And you can't control that necessarily in the moment. Now, you can actually retrain your brain. There are things you can do um, and, and through a process. But if we don't start by inviting the uncomfortable, like that's to figure never, out what that is. Yeah. Because like what's going on is there's something else coming up. It's something yeah. else blowing up. It's not often. Uh, I like to talk about leadership a lot and, and, and leading through something and what great visionaries and leaders do. And when when great leaders or visionaries or people who want to, to plow a new path, people, uh, if you can do that, people will follow you, right? Where there's no vision. This is a scripture where there's no vision that people perish. Mm -hmm. Where these things aren't true, all of a sudden, all the little things of life are more important. Mm -hmm. So this is true in a marriage. Um, if you guys aren't on the same page, right? If you guys aren't leading together, right? Um, if you guys aren't, are, don't have the same goals and everything. Then it becomes about the dishwasher loading. Oh, right! But that's not what it's about. But there is right? a wrong and right way to load the dishwasher. Amy's Just so we're clear. Amy's got comments. Got oh, okay. <laughs> okay, first of all, Erin had a really good comment. She said labels on people or groups of people make her uncomfortable. Uh -huh. She said people deserve better as human beings. Oh, I love that. Humanize. Yep. We are more than the label. I uh, love that. Because we're so presumptuous when we slap a label on somebody. We are assuming that we got it down. We know what is in their mind and heart. And that is the most arrogant presumption to make about somebody. That is such a good comment. Well, ooh, so I'm going to get everybody uncomfortable. We, when people, this is an uncomfortable phrase right now for some people, right? When people say black lives matter, ooh, what happens with some people? Ooh, right? Rawr. We just know it's going to be about conflict, whatever it's Yeah, that. yeah. And, this, and, so, and so, you know, of course there's an organization, all this stuff, but, um, but you know, there, there's these things that happen that well up within us. And it's like, just because you say a phrase doesn't mean you agree with the group. Just because I say certain things that Republicans agree with doesn't make me a Republican, right? You can't lump me in and say, but we label I'll, I'll, each other oh, yeah, that. but we do, right? Yeah. So when we say these words... We have to, on the other side, we cannot put, we can't pigeonhole people. Yeah, because, I know who you are because you just said X, Y, Yeah, so, so, and if you believe that, then you yeah. have to believe all these other things, right? right? Um, so all of a sudden, I'm no longer an independent thinker. I just fall in line. Yeah. I'm a sheeple, right? Yeah. I just fall in line with everything that... One or the other. Yeah. Anything else, Amy? Carla said she hates being labeled. She said, I really don't fit into any mold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, perfect. really wise because a lot of people aren't comfortable with themselves enough to be able to make us yes that's like true that. that takes a lot of self-confidence and knowing who you are to say i am not going to just sway this way or sway that way i'm going to think about my own because that's the, it's easy to just lump yourself in right? yeah that's the that's the, the path, path. least resistance <laughs> that's what really? we do that is <laughs> yeah. exactly what yep. we do yep. to avoid conflict to avoid having to make difficult thoughts and decisions about things. Like it's easier just to say, oh, I'm with oh, this I'm group. tired, I'm just gonna do this. Yeah, I'm just gonna be a whatever. I'm gonna do that, yeah, We're sure. We're one minute. Oh, right. one minute left? Yeah. It's a good conversation today. Yeah. Well, um, we'll have it for three more weeks because there's two more, we well, three, two, two more weeks. Two more to this, Two yeah. more table talks, we'll talk about this. So I, I do wanna end these by inviting you to join us uh, this Sunday as we're gonna keep talking about, we're gonna talk about other, 
We're talking about the story about how Jesus leaves the masses, the 99, and chases and follows the one. Uh, it's this uncomfortable story that we don't like. And so I do want to invite you to join us Sunday, and I want you to invite you to, to come back and join us next week. Leave comments and questions. If I, I will, we will address things the next week. I know some of you will uh, text me individually, uh, uh, but leave comments here on this. We'll about, bring it up next yeah, week. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. it. Yeah. yeah, that's the best when we can hear what's on your heart. Yeah, uh, and hopefully next week we'll have a partition so we don't have to have the mask. You can see Allison's smiley face. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, have a great day. This is episode seven know. of Table Talk. I don't know, whatever it is. Peace. <laughs>